Monte Carlo and white yachts, playthings of the very rich bearing their millionaires to the Côte d'Azur. But others prefer adventure, motoring adventure through the fogs and over the glassy roads of winter Europe to reach the glittering target. Adventure for sporting motorists in everyday cars. But first, the inevitable form before the excitement begins. From the Greek capital, Rome and Lisbon in the south, from frigid Oslo and iron-curtained Warsaw, from the temperamental climes of The Hague, Glasgow and Paris, cars will stream over the long routes which take them to France and their meeting point at Chambéry in Savoy, whence they will file over the tortuous routes of the Alpes Dauphine to their shimmering objective on the blue Mediterranean. Paris was chosen as starting point by four famous British crews in their Austin 7 and Mini Miners. First real rally test for BMC's sensational new babies. Cars of all nationalities line up at the road safety center by the Porte Maillot for the start of their 2,000 mile journey. The Morley brothers, winners of last year's Tulip Rally, slip into the Paris traffic, followed by Powell's privately entered MGA. Alec Pitts has forsaken his blown Bentley for the Mini Miner. More prosaic, but exciting. Here is Tom Wisdom, veteran of a dozen Monte Carlo rallies in his Austin 7, sliding off up the Avenue de la Grande Armée into the maelstrom of the Etoile traffic. Small hazard for such experienced crews. Already, cars are on their way from Oslo, Warsaw and Glasgow. Pat Moss and Wisdom, Nancy Mitchell and Peter Riley among them. Soon others will join them in their dash to rendezvous at the focal point Chambéry, where the communal route to Monaco begins. The MGA sliding through the Ardennes is Cliff Ward, a Hague starter. And Pat Cezanne in the Vosges. All of Europe's cars from all of Europe's capitals converge as if drawn by a magnet. From here, secondary roads are the order of the day, twisting and turning over the cars of Granier, Coucheron, Rousset and half a dozen others. Darkness is an extra hazard for early starters. The more experienced will have accumulated enough time here for minor repairs. For at the end of this section, the cars will be locked away in the Parc Fermé before the final exacting classification test on the morrow. Off goes Woolly Bear Riley towards the Col du Granier. The Metropolitan Police are having a go too, under the eyes of the experts. Remember the 30 kilometer speed limit, Mr. Chilavere. And you too, Alec Pitts. Tom Wisdom knows that the wet on these roads will turn to ice in the shadow of the mountains. Did you know, Monsieur le Gendarme, that Pat Moss and Anne Wisdom were just going to come through your tunnel in their A40? But the mountains are too grim to smile. The ice which made the Rousset a terror in the night has thawed for the many who cross it for the second time in a dozen hours. Hard shoulder work takes the place of fingertip driving as Lasset follows Lasset. Truck drivers are courteous on an occasion like this, but there must be a constant vigil. 
wide track and independent suspension give the Mini Miner magnetic road holding under foul conditions, scoring over more conventional cars. mountains, a bistro provides a warming background for the controllers with their time clock. The BMC babies are staunch survivors among the diminished stream of cars which make the last stretch. and tumble of rallying has no terrors for Isigoni's masterpiece. Wheels at the corners and the revolutionary rubber suspension give the little cars a stability and resilience which deal easily with the vagaries of French secondary roads. Off the Col de Grimon, onto the route Napoléon at the top of the Col de Croisot through Provençal villages which seem deserted without the drenching sun. Torby, scene of classic hill climbs, is passed as the cars slip down the Grand Corniche into the Principalité to the final control, situated at a point where Grand Prix cars take the first turn in the race of a thousand corners, another great Monaco tradition. This sinuous circuit through the Alpmarie team must be circled twice, once by day and once by night, and penalties await crews for seconds of lateness at controls or differences in time between the two circuits. The Mrs. Moss and Wisdom, already penalized, will need all their skill to beat the clock ticking away remorselessly as starter after starter roars away into the night, back up the Corniche and into the mountains by Luceron. In the bitter light of the television players, first the Morley brothers and then Pat Moss and Anne Wisdom pull off into the night. Two kinds of winter sport in Valberg today, experts on the road and beginners on the slopes. There is not much grip to lose in these parts. Concentration is the thing. Pat Moss wisely wears a helmet, for this is a race against time. bomb would leave these mountains unscathed. Man-made scratches like contour lines are the roads on which the cars run. A 
30 mile an hour average is an achievement under such conditions. Alec Pitts still going strong after arguing with a truck. Up above the snow line, cars of all makes stream towards the welcome dryness of the valley. Another of the minis. Pat Moss hard on its heels. The big cars are at a disadvantage on roads such as these, but the little minis thrive on it. Touring cars manned by touring champions and all at their limit. In sterner times, this was Maquis country. The Bailey Bridge over the Var is a memorial to French patriotism and to British engineering. Corner after corner and the darkness of tunnel to dry tired eyes. trailing his exhaust pipe this time, he seems to have hit everything in Provence. They say the car will be buried at sea with full naval honours at the end of the rally. A giddy lot, these rallyists. Control at Chateau Neuf, banging the last clock for the last time under the watchful eyes of ski-booted officials, then the neutralized section into Monaco for the flashlights, the photographers, and bed. Wonderful bed before the jollifications and congratulations. Congratulations in plenty to Pat Moss and Anne Wisdom, for they have run true to form, retrieved their position, and won the Coupe des Dames for the second year running. And what do rally successes mean to the ordinary BMC car owner? Just this. In workaday driving, or on more formal occasions, those rally victories are his guarantee of continuing reliability. When he's cruising quietly through the gentle countryside of England, he knows that his car would cope just as well with far tougher demands. The BMC owner knows he can rely on his car because the best rally drivers in the world have proved it.